game is 5 o'clock and here's the world news at 5. First, the top stories. Ogun Assembly begins consideration of the state's proposed 2018 budget. October salaries may delay a state's boycott revenue allocation meeting. Buhari appoints committee to negotiate new national minimum wage. Senate indicts the FCC over asset recovered from pension thieves. 155 killed, 100 others injured in gun bomb attacks on Egypt's mosque. New Zimbabwe president inaugurated. And to be just very news in detail shortly. The State House of Assembly has begun the consideration of the state's 2018 appropriation bill of 345 billion naira. The consideration of the bill follows a motion moved by the House Minority Leader, Nawali Alonsa, and supported by the Women Affairs Committee Chairman, Mrs. Yotele Shobei, for its second reading. Governor Nikola Muslim last Tuesday presented the bill to the Assembly. Allocation to the bill provides 223.7 billion era for capital project and 121.6 billion era for the correct expenditure. The House Finance and Appropriation Committee Chairman, Rodushala Bakole, while debating the bill, enjoined its quick passage in line with the Assembly's plan before the end of the fiscal year. The Deputy Speaker, Tony Romo, says the budget bill is very ambitious because of the high percentage given to capital project. The Speaker, Suraj Adikobi, refers the bill to the Finance and Appropriation Committee for further legislative consideration. Four personnel of the Nigerian Customs Service have been injured in an attack by smugglers in a village near the Idiropo border of Nigeria with the Benin Republic. The Customs officer were injured during a raid of the village for an intelligence received that a new Toyota Helios vehicle smuggled from the Republic was hidden in the village. The Deputy Captions Controller, Sandy Madugo, who were the stone to this at the Diroko border post, says the smugglers on site of the customs patrol in the village attacked them with dangerous objects. In the process, four of the officers were injured and an operational vehicle damaged. Madugo says the customs officer eventually seized the smuggled vehicle. The payments of November salaries to workers in the public sector may delay as the 36th government stayed away from sharing the statutory revenue for the month of October. Finance commissioners of the 36th government refused to attend a monthly meeting of the Federation Accounts Allocation Committee on Thursday in Abuja about the revenue av available for sharing. Chairman of the Forum of Finance Commissioners of Nigeria, Mahmoud Yunusa, told the newsmen they took the decision following the directive from the chairman of the Nigerian Governors Forum, Governor Dolaziz Yari. He says the boycott is supported the discrepancies to the figures of revenue presented by the presidency, an issue which, according to him, was discussed at the meeting of the National Economic Council in Abuja. The UNISA says the meeting for sharing of revenue will be suspended until the revenue figure are reconciled. The Senate has postponed its scheduled debate and consideration of the 2018 to 2020 medium term expenditure framework and fiscal strategy bill. The bill, which stipulates the parameter upon which the national budget is based, is scheduled for debate and consideration on Thursday. Finance, Appropriation, and National Planning Committee Chairman John Eno, however, told the plenary that the debate could not hold due to some discrepancies in the bill. He says the committee needs to further consult on some of the matters in the bill with the Joint Committee of the House of Representatives. Senate President Bukola Saraki directs the committee to present the document on Wednesday next week. President Buhari has approved a tripartite committee to negotiate a new national minimum wage for workers. The 20 member committee, headed by former Housing Minister Alma Pepper, Will be inaugurated on Monday next week. Representing the federal government to the committee are ministers of labor, budget, and national planning and finance, as well as the chairman of national salaries, incomes, and wages commission, and the head of service of the federation. Governors are Ruf Arubeshala, Rochas Okrocha, Simon Lalong, Ibrahim Dampambo, and Atiku Bagudu, representing the federal state governments. Other members of the committee are top leaders of the Nigerian Labour Congress, Trade Union Congress, for the Organized Labour, and the 
Nigeria Employers Consultative Association for the organized private sector. The organized labor is demanding a rise in the monthly minimum wage from 18,000 naira to 56,000 naira. The Senate has indicted the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, EFCC, about the asset recovered by the presidential tax force and the pensions refund from pension thieves. The Senate committee is set up to investigate the reinstatement of the former chairman of the tax force, Abdul Rashid Mina, to the Senate plenary, and the tax force recovered 222 properties from the pension thieves. The properties include houses, hotels, as well as the investment portfolio in Abuja, Lagos, and other cities. Before Mina left the country, the Senate Committee says the seized assets were handed over to EFCC, which is started to really impart the custody of recovered goods. The Senate, however, says the investigation reveals that recovered assets in EFCC custody were allegedly shared by some vested interest. Senate President Mukola Saraki is worried about the revolution and directed the committee to further investigate those behind the rerouting of the recovered assets and report its findings to the plenary within the next four weeks. Southwest PDP factional chairman Dr. Eddie Olafeso says he remains the authentic chairman of the party in the zone. He rejected claim by Chief Mark Androla who said last Monday that he is a zonal chairman recognized by the court and that his faction will send Southwest delegate to the national convention coming up on December 8th. Challenging the claim, Olafeso says he is the zonal leader confirmed by the last non-elected national convention of the party in Abuja. Lafeso explained that a court recognition referred to by Mark Jola is being challenged at the appellate court. You are still listening to the World News of 5 on Rock City 11.9 FM. Up next to bring your foreign business and sport news. Please do stay with us. Crowds have gathered at a 60,000-seat stadium in Zimbabwe's capital, Harare, to witness the swearing of Emerson Mangagua as the country's president. It followed the dramatic departure of Robert Mugabe after 37 years of authoritarian rule. Mr. Mangagua, who had fled the country, returned from exile on Wednesday. The position is urging Mr. Nalangua, who has been part of the ruling elite, to end the culture of corruption. Ahead of the ceremony, Mr. Unagangwa urged the Zimbabweans to remain patient and peaceful in the zeal for many form of vengeful retribution. Mr. Unagangwa pledged to create jobs in a country where some estimates say 90% of people are unemployed. In Cameroon, members of parliament from the main opposition SDF party had disrupted proceedings in parliament. They are demanding that the concerns of Anglophone protesters be discussed. Dozens of people have been killed in recent weeks as authorities crack down on protests against the many French speaking government. SDF representatives have threatened that there will be no business in parliament until the matter is brought up for debate. A number of politicians made it clear they put President Paul Bia responsible, signaling unity how many people Paul Bia will kill. One in five of the 22 million people in the Central African country speak English with many of them complaining of discrimination, especially in the fields of justice and education. Four ships loaded with various products, including petrol, are at the Lagos port waiting to pass. The Nigerian Port Authority NPA in its daily shipping position says the four vessels were waiting to pass with petrol. 33 other ships loaded with petroleum products, food items, and other goods, according to the NPA, we expected at the Papantikan Island port between November 23 and December 23. NPA says the expected ships are carrying buckwheat, containers, general cargoes, empty container, diesel, and aviation fuel. Toll is to return to major highways nationwide. Pa, Works and Housing Minister Raji Fashola, announced this at a meeting the Federal Roads Maintenance Agency FEMA Committee in the Senate. In Abuja, the minister says 38 points have been identified nationwide and construction work has begun. Fashola explained that the toll gate will be installed at the old point will be standardized and that its width will be expanded according to the size of the roads. The new toll point has been managed by private investors. Finally, on the World News of Five, Spot News.
the Super Eagles of Nigeria dropped to nine places. The list says FIFA Coca Cola World Rankings released on Thursday. This is where the teams improved from. The latest rankings, which was published on FIFA's official website, sees the Eagles as in 50th position in the world and 8th in Africa. But while Argentina stayed put on 4th position as the top 5 teams remained unchanged, and Algeria lived in 3 places, the Eagles are now behind Senegal, Tunisia, Egypt, Democratic Republic of Congo, Morocco, Burkina Faso, and Cameroon in the continent. Burkina Faso did not qualify for the World Cup, but moved up 11 places to become 6th in Africa, while Senegal rose to 23rd. Senegal is now the highest ranked African nation. The world the top 10 in the world with Germany is number one, Brazil number two, Portugal in third position, Argentina in fourth position, and Belgium in fifth position. After a three week injury layoff, Nigerian Chelsea forward Victor Moses is set to return to action in the coming weekend. Moses, who has just returned to after training, was allowed to rest and continue his fitness workout. While the rest of the Chelsea squad travel to Azerbaijan to face FK Karabakh on match day 5 of the UEFA Champions League. He is on the course to return to action against his former team Liverpool on Saturday at Anfield. His return will be a big boost for the Blues, who will be without the services of BJ Bashwani, who is still missing a foot injury. Chelsea is presently placed third on the EPL table. That was the World News at 5. In just before we go, the major stories will take it. Local House of Assembly begins consideration of the state proposed 2018 budget. October salaries will delay a state work world revenue allocation meeting. Buhari appoints committee to negotiate a new national minimum wage. Senate indicts EFCC over asset recovered from pension thieves. 155 people killed, 100 others injured in Ghana. Long attack on Egypt's mask. New Zimbabwean president inaugurated. For more stories or to listen to us live, please log on to our website. It's www.voxitfmradio.com forward slash live. Thank you so much for listening. I am Toby Joseph. Good evening.